Tim McGrath. Gormagot, vote of confidence in the Taoiseach, and he put it down on himself and his own party did. I wish we were talking about the real issues here and the real problems, but look, he was fair enough to put it down himself, he believes himself. I listened to the rant of some of the ministers, they believe in it too. But I want to say you're about the only, you're about the only people, you're about the only people that have confidence in yourself. And you're in a cocoon in here, if you think. And you'll see, and I'm not for protest, protest, protest. You'll see when you go and meet the people. You can't go into your constituencies. You can't go and turn aside when there is good news. And I welcome the good news that has come because people are protesting, because you have, uh, they've given you the finest mandate that anyone ever got Taoiseach. And I voted for you, Taoiseach, but I'm bitterly disappointed. And what way do the people feel? What way do the people feel? You've turned your back on them all. You've turned your back on them totally. And you have. OK, there was austerity. There was austerity. But you look after the fat cats. You promised us reform. You promised us openness and transparency. You have been a, an abysmal failure in all those areas. You packed more boards with people. You packed the courts with your own cronies. You packed all the boards. You, were so, you tried to get rid of the Senate. And when the people rejected that, you said you got a wallop. You don't, to the wallop you're going to get from Taoiseach, and the many wallops you're going to get, and I could use stronger words, but I won't here today. I think, Taoiseach, it's an awful, an awful pity that you didn't live up to any path that demanded. You promised the Oma Bomb families. You promised the Father, Father um, uh, Beast Offaly family, uh, the family in Offaly, and you promised them justice. Many, many other groups. You were able to go and meet um, um, Miss Cahill, and I, I salute her for her bravery, but you couldn't meet the families that wanted justice for their loved ones who were killed. You've been an abject failure to those people, and that's all you have to meet them. You were able to go down last week to meet the homeless people. Did you have to wait till our unfortunate individual died last week on the street 50 yards from here to know that there was a homeless problem? Would you call in the banks to teach them? Would you rail in them at Tisho, who are making people homeless, who are terrorising a widow woman in my own county for her own late husband had to end his own life? And now NAMA, and I ask you to call off the hound dogs of NAMA and the officials and to stop them terrorising that family in a decent family in County Tipperary, of whom you'll be aware of and you should know, and your, your Minister Hayes knows and other people know. It's a shame and disgrace the way the people are being making sacrifices here. We all bailed out the banks, and I was one who voted for the biggest mistake I ever made in my life, and now what are they doing? They're piddling and walking down on top of us all with great sanction from yourself and the Minister there, and letting them off with a prom and back, patting them on the back. There's 100,000 people awaiting eviction. Are you talking about the homeless that are here? Try and sort out that problem by calling off the hound dogs at the bank's revenue. And as I said, NAMA, the biggest and most dangerous, and I can use a word, I won't use it here, but I, it starts with a C, organisation of all. And it's a merry-go-round that are identifying properties. They won't sell them for the price they're getting from decent people who want to buy them. They're keeping them for their friends and contacts to sell them at knockdown price. It's stinked and rotten to the core of what they're doing to all these families. It's disgusting, T-shirt. And I'm very disappointed about that. I have Minister Varadkar here, and just to show how confused you are as a government, he said you were the, the, the captain that could uh, steady the ship on the ocean. Does he not know a captain flies on an airline and it's only a, it's at the, the, the captain is normally on a plane and it, it, it's a, it's a ship is navigated by somebody other? But neither us or the people have any confidence in you to navigate the ship of state, Taoiseach, anywhere anymore because we've, you've lost all credibility and all respect. And I heard Minister, um, uh, former Minister for Health then, talking about what he did in health. He destroyed the health service. We have people now waiting three months to get into a fair deal, something we all bought into and passed and persuaded people to buy into it when there are people waiting that into time. I heard a man today on radio, or a woman on today, about her father, 103 years of age, be talked out of a long stay home and be told to go someplace else because he can't keep him. You taxed the hearse in the last budget, second last budget. I said you taxed the shroud, and I don't know how you can do this budget, but you're doing it every day of the week because you took away the debt grant. And you're also taxing Medicare card holders now who spend any more than 30, 30, 25 days in the consecutive year, 30 days in the consecutive year in a hospital, of any type of hospital, are charged, no matter what their income is, they're charged in so much a day. How low can you go? But then again, teacher, you haven't the power record of your party for looking after the ordinary people and the plain people and the working class people of Ireland. I say to you, teacher, you did look after but in honest and openly. You promoted your ministers. You promoted Minister Hogan out to Europe after he wrecked democracy, banishing town councils, forcing Irish water in here and laughing about it. No debate, three hours. Look at the monsters created now. You were all boasting, if you didn't get back pictures, he was a red man, did all the heavy lifting. He forced Tipperary to get us by the deputy Matthew McGrath. He was some man, he brought in property tax. Now he's gone to Brussels, to his pension scheme. He brought the train with him. 
and you know the heavy lifting and the sky is falling down around you, you know what's happening. You're mesmerized. As my good colleague, Deputy Hilly Ray, would say, and I sympathize with the death of his late father, Jackie, would say, you were in a coma for three and a half. You woke up suddenly because the people had been have awoken. The people are awake now. They saw what was going on with the air grid in the country, trying to destroy our country. Put up pilots with something there was no need for, with no study analysis, just bailing out your friends, giving the big business to your friends. And then we wish game. I said at the time, the only thing I liked about it was the name. I liked the Changa and the Kukla Fokal Gaelge. Other than that, it's a man's Atrocity that's hanging around your neck, and you have mess after mess after mess. Minister Kelly, my own fellow Tipperary man, he put out his chest that he's like John F. Kennedy. His legacy is going to be. Well, I tell you what his legacy is going to be. He'll be up to his oxtails in water and something else before he knows it. Minister Hogan also tried to plagiarise the people of rural line as being dirty, and they simply thank you. So now all the cause of the pollution. Now you're admitting every day that it rings in and the 42 towns and municipal districts that are causing that. When it suits you to try and blame the people. Anyone ever do water from a well minister or a teacher knows that it has to be organised and has, has have got and knows the value of water. I'm not saying it should be free. I'm saying that we don't need the fat cats of Irish water. We don't need the people who are sometimes failed in the senior positions in public service to be rewarded again by getting bigger jobs than Irish water and no accountability whatsoever. Accountable in my hat. Transparency and opens and accountability. You have a reform of the courts. What you give us? A next layer of judges. A new layer in the court. With no definition of the, how many courts cases they're going to hear or what about justice for the ordinary people. You went out to get in major numbers of water for court and other courts recently to stop advocates going in to help to stand with families who couldn't afford balances. That's what you did. It's, 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 it's fair justice, and Minister Burton can say there, I said that you were tinkering with the, with the social welfare bill, and you were, to try and avoid the mess and the damage Irish water was doing. Instead of dealing with people who are on the bright line, dealing with people who are being made homeless, you decided to pay people 100 euro to, take, to, to register for water. If they have a septic tank, and they have to have a, a well as well, you'll give another 100 euro. And, you go, and I heard on the news in the following morning, social welfare are going to take on more officials to administer this. What in God's name is going on? You will need to pinch yourself over there and wake up because the people are out there and your epitaph is well written. It's written now for some time and the people will be ready to write it. And when they're going to write it in their ones, they come in ones and they go into the ballot box the first chance they get and your epitaph will be written. You'll be banished to oblivion. And you might have, I was in the worst days of last government and we weren't as headless, we weren't, the people weren't as frightened and the people weren't as angry as they are now. They promised so much to you in good faith. They gave the good faith as a stroke in the pen. They were promised hospitals. They were promised they wouldn't have a boss in this country. They were promised dozens of things. They were all rubbish and put down the drain. And I say, shame on you. And shame on the people who will vote confidence on you. As I said, we should, we should be debating many other aspects here this evening. You talked about, Minister Bruton talked about the jobs. And Minister Burton as well. A tarnish to Burton as well. Yes, and, and the Minister for Diaspora. You have to appoint them because there's so many people going about working. You need to permanent ministers overseas to try and look after them. And they're scrambling at the moment to try and come home to help their families for Christmas. And we should be having a joyous period here today at Christmas time, coming up to Christmas, not dealing with this motion that you put down because you believe in your own rhetoric. But I think, Minister, since you got rid of Frank Fannery, since Minister Hogan went to Europe, since your famous Minister of Justice, who refused to bring in scrap and metal bills and many other, the great reforming minister, since they have left you, you are at sea, Minister, and you can't get your hand on the wheel, and you can't steady the ship, because you've other ministers that might be talking confidence today in you, and back benches, they're talking otherwise outside here, Minister, and in the constituencies, and they're saying that they're voting against this, and they're voting against this Taoiseach and that. I tell you, Taoiseach, your days are numbered. And the sooner you smell up, uh, stand up and smell the coffee and not visit the homeless people. Visit the people who the banks are terrorising. Visit the family in Tipperary, I ask you, and I'll give you the details, the, who NAMA are persecuting. A state organisation paid for by, by taxpayers and they're treating people like that. The Black and Tans didn't do it. The Black and Tans didn't do it as bad what you're doing. And that is fact. And you know it. You've closed down rural Ireland with, 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 with dictates of Europe. And it's with dictates from here. And you've closed down rural towns. No longer than your own town of Castlebar. I was there recently. You should be ashamed to say you're represented, Minister. I know the people there, many of them are of the same. We saw the difficulty your, your brother got into during the local election. Rural Ireland, rural towns are stifled with bureaucracy. They're stifled with the banks who want lending a shilling to anyone, only getting the bank, the bank, the bank, the bank chat levels right. And I say to you, Taoiseach, you have some nick to place a motion of confidence in yourself because you can't have confidence. I ask you, look in the mirror. 
See the failure you've been. See the overbound victims. I see the other people who you promised to you. get, you get justice to. And you. how you've failed them miserably and disgracefully. Remarkable.